hey everybody, welcome to Old Roommates, today on the show. We revisit Velma and Louise. So grab your wild turkey and get ready. Hey, hey everyone, welcome to Old Roommates, the only podcast that revisits pop culture through a middle-aged lens. This is Christina. And this is Brian. And we're revisiting Thelma and Louise, 1991, starring Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis, Brad Pitt, isn't Harvey, it? Harvey Keitel. Harvey Keitel. Michael Madsen. Yeah, lots of... Oh, Christopher McDonald. Is it Christopher? That's right. Oh, Christopher... Yeah, Chris, Christopher McDonald. McDonald, yeah. right? Um, before we begin, rest assured, we are in the pandemic still. So we are still playing it safe. We are at Brian's house, sitting quite a few feet apart. And, um, yeah, we're still, we're still playing it safe, guys, social distancing. So we're hoping this will end soon and we can get back into the studio to record. But I we know. appreciate you all sticking by us and, and continuing to listen through not optimal, optimal conditions. So thank you very much. But onward and upward, Brian, where were you when you first saw Thelma and Louise? All right, so some fun Personal trivia. There are very few movies that I've ever seen twice in a movie theater. Hmm. Even fewer that I've seen three times. I think um, I saw Thelma and Louise three times in the movie theater. I, so I know I saw Trick, which we revisited before. Mm -hmm. I saw that three times. Um, as Good As It Gets, uh, Jack Nicholson, Helen sure. Hodge, I saw that three times. And I believe I saw Thelma and Louise at least twice in a movie theater. Um, so this is 91, so I was only out of high school for a year. I remember like walking out of this movie being like, wow, I just saw an adult, like an adult mm. grown up. Like it felt so rich and deep mm. and about so many things. And then that ending, Ugh. what, like, I mean, I was such a, I was such a movie geek growing sure. up. That I feel like, you know, you've seen it all. And that ending was so shocking and weirdly um, hopeful and happy. As, as happy it could be for a movie like this. But just, it blew me away. It really, it really shocked me. It was such a different ending. We can go on. We can talk about the <laughs> ending further But that was, that was then. But it, I mean, it, it hit me. And... Um, and just the, the, I mean, about the soundtrack, I really loved this movie then. Mm -hmm. How about you? I really loved this movie then also. I watched it pr at least probably twice in the movie theaters with friends. I was, let's see, 91. Um, I was probably, what, in my mid-20s, early to mid-20s. So I was like right at that point in my growing up phase of my life where, you know, you kind of feel like a woman or like you kind of want to be a woman, <laughs> but you're still sort of not there. So it was like a really great movie for someone in that age where you, wo you walked out and you felt like, damn, like that was my movie. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. I really loved that movie. I loved their friendship. Mm -hmm. I loved the adventure that they went on. Mm -hmm. It I, it had so many different aspects of their story between the scary, you know, mm -hmm. tragic parts. Mm -hmm. But mostly, it was a feel good movie. Mm -hmm. As much trouble as they were in and all that, mostly you walk out feeling good about it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, um, the only thing I did not like about it was the end. Oh. Yeah. E even I, then. Even then. Then, yes. Okay. I, I remember it just being like, why did it have to end that way? Like, they were such great characters. Like, why did they have to die? And I was almost confused. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Like, why did that just happen that way? And I remember feeling like it ended really quick. 
Well, yeah, we can get to that if yes. you want. Like, um, that was not, you're not alone in that. Right. That... I remember it being very controversial <laughs> when it came up. Well, I love the ending. I d- now, I will say, and this is a deeper note this time around, but uh, Roger Ebert uh, famously um, hated the, not the ending, but the way the ending was handled, like you said, super quick, mm. how it just, it's like it just fades. off the cliff and it just goes white. And then mm-hmm. instantly into like the flashbacks of all the happy times. And, um, but I think what it's, it I believe this has been said yeah. that they were afraid of freezing on it too long because you could see that they were dummies. Like there's only so much control. I mean, oh, yeah. there's only so many mm-hmm. times you can throw a car off a cliff. Yeah. So it's like. The they were afraid if they if they were frozen too long, you could see the imperfections of the dummies, mm-hmm. and that it would lose a lot of the magic. Wait, to are that, you telling me that Susan Sarandon and James Davis were not in that car? <laughs> wow, my mind has the, just been blown. However, I would argue then 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 stay on the white. Like they get faded to white, so it's like yeah. just leave, maybe stay on that a bit. My issue with the end was that it went. From like the white, the fade to white, to like all these little happy picture taking moments. Yeah, it was moments. weird. And the song it felt wrong. To the me. song was upbeat, I believe. Right? I forget what the ending song was, but I felt like the last song was like a little up. Yeah, it's like you're a part of me. I'm a part of you. Yeah. Yeah. Glenn Fry? No. Glenn. Glenn. No. Campbell? No. Wait. Glenn. Well, who sings Bo- oh um, gosh, Boys of Summer? Again. Who sings Boys of Summer? Glenn. Or, or end of the in- innocence. Wait a second. I'm just looking it up. I don't know why we guess. Why do we guess? We have this I don't know. Device we we right have here. like this weird computer right in our hands. So, so you want to dive into now? So yeah, or, let's yeah. dive into now. Um, so for now, for me, I liked it just as much. I was sucked right back into it. It. I just watched it a couple of days ago for some reason. Um, I think. Well, my library. I got it from the library, and I feel like it's been taking a little longer. I think they quarantine the DVDs for a while or whatever. So I got it kind of just a few days ago. And I wanted to make sure I had plenty of time to just sit and watch it from beginning to end. Because I remembered how much I loved it. I hadn't seen it in a long time. But I remembered how much I loved it back then. And I I just want to sit and enjoy this movie. And I was able to do that, which I was happy about. And... I was just sucked right into it again. I just loved it from the very beginning. I forgot a lot of, not a lot, but I forgot little stuff. Like I remembered um, Christopher, is it McDonald? It is. It is McDonald? Christopher McDonald's character, Daryl. I remember him being like a jerk, but I, I forgot like how funny he was. Yeah. And I remembered Harvey Keitel, but again... I remembered him being great, but I forgot, like, how great. Like, he was in it a lot more mm-hmm. than I remembered him being. Mm-hmm. And even just the development of their changes in their personalities and, you know, how they are throughout the movie. When I was thinking about rewatching it, I'm like, oh, I hope that didn't happen too fast. Like, I hope I'm still enjoy and feel like its realistic growth, which I did. So I was happy about that. So it was, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was, it was great. What about you for now? (laughs) For now, my instant, my sort of immediate thing is I loved it even more. I loved it even more. And actually I just watched it yesterday. So, um, had I had, I I honestly, honestly, so I did, um, some vacation, bit of vacation this week. So like, I was like, I, if I had more time, I would rewatch it right now. Mm, I know. It had the style, the cinematography, the score. And you mentioned, like, that it's a feel-good movie. I think, like, the the music, though, like, it's, like, those long... Yes. It's kind of foreboding. It's kind of like, this is not going to end well. Like, as much fun as we're having, we're still, you know... Um, it's a layered, complicated situation. They keep getting this in is deeper not, and deeper they're getting and in deeper. deeper and deeper. This is probably not going to end well. Even then, there was never a moment where I'm like, they're going to make it to Mexico. Mm-hmm. When you find out that they don't want to go through Texas, and then there's that scene where she does take a wrong turn, and they get into like, the cattle, and, and suddenly, like, and that, that seems really important, because it, it's the first time 
they're in a car and they can't go. And right. you suddenly feel, um, and she's getting frazzled. She's like, don't bang my car. And like, she's losing her cool. Mm -hmm. In that moment for me then, and even now I felt it even more deeper. It was like, there's no, ch there's just, this is over. This like, yeah. this is going to end really, really, um, badly for them. Right. Um, but I think my immediate takeaway is like, I just loved it all over again. Mm -hmm. Um, and I noticed more, <clears throat> even from the beginning, excuse me, with, um, uh, uh, Velma, Gina Davis's character, like in her house, did you notice the number of coupons she has up? I didn't. Oh, oh my, my gosh. God. It's like the first few minutes and it's, she has coupons up everywhere. She has coupons up on her cabinets and the side of the <laughs> fridge. There's coupons and like, I don't mean little, like little onesie coupons. There's like flowing. Oh my it's gosh. Hilarious. Daryl, you mentioned the, him like so, so funny. He had his license plate. Oh, first of all, when he slips and falls, oh, there's that's no, the that's no, way, there's no way he planned that. No, that was no. The they best. left it in. He, yeah. All right. I mean, I don't know the trivia on that, but that is a real fall. Um, his license plate says, um, "Oh gosh." Oh, what is it? The one. The one. Or yeah, the one. And then his necklace is the number one. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. I mean, um, he's an asshole. There's no doubt about that. But he is absolutely like that. That comic relief in this movie for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was. And when he just can't, he can never find the words. He's like, "Well, I, 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 well, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what to say then. I, I, I've got like he wants to be so angry, and he just isn't. Like he's just all." Like, um, he's all show. He's, a, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you never feel like she's in danger nope. at all. No. Um, I he mean, just doesn't want to be, he's like, he's like mean, doesn't want to be bo but, bothered. Like, yeah, yeah. He's, he's mean and maybe a little <laughs> bit of, you know, mental abuse to her. But she also doesn't strike me as someone that really cares about what he's saying. Like, she's, she kind of knows that she's stuck in this shitty yes. relationship. Yeah. But she doesn't feel like there's a way out. And she just doesn't, I mean, it's like, she doesn't you, care. She's you get the sense that, that she it. knows, that she knows the things he'll tolerate and things he won't tolerate, which is why she doesn't even tell him that she's going on the trip. Right. She lets him know. Awesome. Um, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, honestly, I, this is going to just be a lot of, like, praise for this movie. Yes. Um, from, for me, um, I think, uh. There are things, I think it's just being older and like what I didn't, so again, as much as I watched it before, like three times or so, like, I don't think I've, I don't think I've seen this movie in probably 15, same. 15, 20 yeah, years. Same here. So the silver bullet, the name of the, the honky tonk where they go is the silver bullet, which oh is Oh my gosh, crazy I didn't even know The one that. bullet that changes the whole movie. Isn't that funny? You see, this is something that was so chilling to me and I wasn't looking for it. But it's like, now that you know everything, like, sure. I'm watching it, you see Harlan immediately. Immediately. He's in the background. Oh, yeah. It he's reminded right there, me of, he's watching them yeah. the whole time. You remind, it, it, so cute, that it reminded me of Fatal Attraction at the big party. Oh, when sure. Close is right, she's in plain sight. I mean, she's, she's not in the foreground, she's in the background. But now that you know the characters, mm -hmm. you're like, oh my god, he's right fucking there. And he is staring at... Velma Ugh. from the second he see yeah he's, it's creepy he's it's awful creepy. honestly <clears throat> a lot of the guys are staring at them walking in they're all kind of gawking True. at them yeah. but yes you do obviously notice him right away and then he comes right over and Louise has his number from the very <laughs> beginning and he knows that Louise has his number yep. and he's just like I don't care I'm yep. gonna. I'm still. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You love I'm ladies. making my mark. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna find my opportunity. Like he had that whole oh, thing yeah. planned out. He's probably done it many times. Mm -hmm. He had it all planned out. The way he's spinning oh, her. Oh my god! I was getting. Her, I was getting nauseous. Her. He's. Yeah. It, it, he's done this before. Yeah. He wants her to feel Nikki. She needs air. Yeah. He wants to get her alone, and he did it even more when she. He knew that she was leaving, and that Louise is going into the bathroom. Um, I do love um, that scene. Well, at the at the table with Thelma and Louise, where um, Harlan comes over, and uh, Thelma just can't help herself, and she's like, "Well, Louise is just mad because her boyfriend." Yeah. But <laughs> She's so, she's so funny. Oh my gosh. At the beginning, because she just splabbles everybody, everything. She's so naive. She mm. plays naive so well. Yeah. yeah. 
She's so naive and she's so trusting to everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone she meets. I mean, just. And if I do have a critique, yes, and I do have a few critiques, but they're, they're, they're minor. But I will say this: um, that that scene with Harlan, with the, the attempted rape scene, is so awful. Oh. And not that it should have been anything other than awful, but no, it's bad. I mean, he's fucking spitting and drooling, and he's, she's screaming, and he's and kicking he's her violent. legs apart. Oh, he's, oh he hits her three. Times he kicks her. Kicking the legs apart, yeah. what it made my stomach turn. Yeah. I'm like Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. I, like that made it really, really real. Yeah. I mean, all the other stuff, of course, hitting and stuff like that. But yeah. I'm like Jesus, like that's that was terrifying. Yeah. And I think like in him hitting her three times, where you're just like, oh my god. Like and and it's um, so going through all of that, and then you know. It, Listen, did I want her to be traumatized for life from this no. experience? No. I know what you're going to say. But the the ease of which she is willing to trust Brad Pitt to yep. the level that she does is... Brad Pitt. <laughs> Would she really be that yeah. friendly to a man, man. one day right. after she was almost that, raped? I had Christina had that same note. And it's it didn't, the same thing. And I didn't think of it... It never crossed my mind when I was you know, much younger in right. 91, but now it was like, it's like, and I'm not saying, well, women need to be more careful. I'm just saying if you were almost I raped don't think, 24 yeah. hours earlier, you would maybe be a little hesitant about being too friendly mm. with anyone, regardless right. of what they look like, with anyone, right. like quite so fast as to, can we please give him a ride? Right. Who has a gun? Who he doesn't know him from a home wall. He's another smooth, just another smooth talker. Exactly. And that was where I was like, and also I would say like that could have been it could have been done in a way where Louise is like, Velma, you we just had an incident with a smart, a smooth talking man. Do we really right. want to put ourselves in danger? But even Louise doesn't. I mean, Louise, Louise is not yeah. into it, but she doesn't bring up. The, the the recent history right. of what just happened to them. Yeah, it, it does. It, the shooting stays with them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. The whole throughout yep, the whole, whole thing. thing. That that is definitely the focus throughout the whole thing. The attempted rape is forgotten as soon as it happens. It is. It is. I mean, I guess that's unfair because I do have a note that says I really I think that. Up until meeting Brad Pitt, right? Mm -hmm. And up until then, I feel like her portrayal was pretty spot on, where she's upset. She's a, like walking around like a zombie. Yeah, she's, yeah that she's, was done really well. She did that yeah. really, really well. She doesn't know what's going on. She doesn't even know where she is. She doesn't know mm -hmm. how had anything happened. She's a mess. Mm -hmm. She doesn't care. Mm -hmm. She's just like walking around like, what are we doing? I don't know. What are we doing? What mm -hmm. are we doing? I don't know. She even like, she even like gets some of her lines like a little like, they feel wrong. Like yeah. when she's by the, they're in the hotel room, she's by the balcony and she says like half a line and then she switches into another line and it just, just that, that franticness of yeah. like, well, you, I'd said go to the police, but you don't want to go to the police and let it, and that I was not, my idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was my, you knew, I, my idea. <laughs> and she gets mad at Louise and it's like, and it's just, you're exactly right. Like yeah. that, I, I loved that stuff. And now, yeah. but I, again, I think with the addition of, maybe I don't know if it happened too soon. I mean, they, I guess they do say no to him first. And then he shows up later on, and they say yes. Yeah. So there's that was, delay, but there was a still, bit. Yeah. It's a trust she was issue. ready. She leaves him, and she leaves him in the hotel room with the envelope of money. Like I also didn't understand. And then my other note is all. Oh, she could my, have at least hid the, hid hid the, the money. money. I and mean, there's a nightstand. It was right on the there. nightstand. Night so I guess that's supposed to speak to how naive she is and how trusting she is to everybody. Even still. Still. But here's the thing. Yeah. There could have been a, a more subtle. Change like that she couldn't she shouldn't have been that naive still he trashed the room he threw her suitcase around everywhere he emptied out the suitcase he was like when they when they discover right yeah so she could have she could have put it in the nightstand and he still would have found it because he was a, he was but trashing at least, the house but at least she, she at least she would have done at least she did it and you'd be yes. like okay it's just I mean 
seven, almost $7,000, like you don't have, um, like you, you, you just leave it there. I also would have questioned Susan Sarandon's choice or, or, or Louise's choice for leaving it with Velma when she's so what? frazzled and, I don't and like, she's why she so would much, have ever... don't trust. I, and not, not that Velma is absent minded, but Velma's made a few mistakes in this trip. Maybe Louise should hold on to the money. She's going next door. I to don't see know the why boyfriend. she didn't hang on to the money. The boyfriend, I mean, she was the going, money to the She trusted exactly, him. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, that was a little bit of a, a mishap right mm-hmm. there. Um, they, I think they could have done it a little differently to make her not look, make them not look so stupid in their choices. Yeah. The not leaving it with Thelma and the Thelma not leaving it, like, out and about. Um, it's funny, they never got back to the ring. I wish she, I wish they had mentioned something about the ring. Because remember, Brad, a J, it was a JD? Yeah, JD. JD. So remember JD, they were doing like, you know, the little game, the hot hands game. And I didn't like that either. And then he took the ring off, mm-hmm. which I think was obnoxious. I thought it was obnoxious back then too. But this time around, I'm like, oh, maybe he took it off so he could steal it. Mm. And that's... And then they never got back to that. Yeah. I wish they had said something like, oh, and he even stole my ring. My ring. Yeah. That would have made more sense to me, not just that he's trying to seduce her. Yeah. I, it's so funny. I didn't, I think all three times I was like, take that wedding ring off. Like you're an unmarried woman tonight kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. Like, was a like it would matter, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Um, you, by the way, quick trivia. Yeah. Um, they had a body double for Gina Davis at the ready, and she was like, no, I'm good. I'll, I'll do this. Good for her. <laughs> they sprayed Evian on Brad Pitt's abs. Oh, wow. Um, or actually, Ridley Scott sprayed his abs himself um, <laughs> to get the glistening abs just yeah. right. Um, and it, allegedly, Brad Pitt was, is in a documentary on some something saying that he was actually, um, he had to be careful he kept getting semi-aroused during oh. their scenes together. But, um, yeah. And then Gina Davis, when she met Brad Pitt at his audition, she she could not focus on her lines. She was just yeah. mesmerized by him. He was beautiful on that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember that was like, whoa, who is this? And I didn't know who he was. Mm-hmm. Apparently he'd been in some shows, Another World or something. He's been in, like a soap opera and things like that before that. He was in one movie before that. Um... But not a main role. Yeah, George. Oh, a horror, a horror movie. Chopping Mall. Chopping Mall. Yeah, but <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't like a main. No, no. You know, thing. Um, George I will Clooney say, auditioned five times for that role. Really? Do you know what, he seems like he would be too old. I thought he's that not too. pretty boy enough. I thought that too. And um, uh, Brad Pitt allegedly only got six thousand dollars for that. I don't. Um, I don't know how though. I thought like there was like scale for an actor. Like there was a minimum. Well, it probably depends on who your agent is, right? I mean, I would think they're different. Six thousand dollars in a major film by Ridley Scott. That seems weird to me, but that's what it, that's what it said. Well, he was he was pretty much a nobody that I remember. <laughs> that's what really put him on the map. Right. So it's you know he's yeah. not the Brad Pitt that we all know and love today. I will say he had some of the worst lines, Brad Pitt. Let's hear him. Oh my gosh. All right. How would you know I wrote them down? <laughs> he, all right. One of the word, one of the lines he says is, I'm stuck here like stink on stink. stink. I like that line. Ugh, I don't like it at all. I felt like they really, like, it was just a little too much on that accent for him, but whatever. Then the next one was, I'm not having a turd's luck getting a ride out here. <laughs> Who has well, he's a player. He's that. a player. He's you a know his luck to, listen, to hit somebody. You know somebody? he has said these lines to a million passers-by. I'm not getting a turd's luck. Oh. That's that's what he's gonna say. Well, because he probably, probably sounds like a country bumpkin, like innocent guy. Yeah. And then when he um, him. then when he finds out that when he meets the husband, mm-hmm. you know, Daryl, yeah. he said, "Well, shit twice and fall back." <laughs> <laughs> did he say fall back in it? Should oh, did he? Oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't yeah. Yeah. Yet. Oh, my God. So funny. It just uh, just funny funny lines from him. But I did... I liked his... It seemed true to his character. I mean, he's like a yeah. petty thief. Like, you know, he's a, he's a, a con man. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, I... Yeah, in terms of dialogue, I wrote a couple lines down. I like when... Um, and it's a movie line for sure, but I still... I fell for it. Like when Dalma... <laughs> 
much. When Thelma's looking at the map and Louise again says she doesn't want to go through Texas, she's like, wait a minute, you want to go? I can't see where social distancing. I wrote it down. It's right here. I know where, I know, but we're running for our lives. Can't Can you we make, make an, an exception? exception? <laughs> 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 and she sells it. She so sells that line. And so I can totally funny. see her saying that. I, I mean, I don't think it's too movie line-ish. It's like, <laughs> but we're, make, we're, we're running for our lives. Um, then uh, the other line I, I love when Daryl, um, the police have invaded Daryl's home. Mm -hmm. They tell him they're going to bug his phone. Yeah. And he's like, is that going to cost me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, are you, are you close with your wife? And he's like, what, what do you mean? Like he's all, doesn't understand what he's talking. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm close. I'm close. And then he looks at the, the cops. He's like, well, as close as I can be to a nutcase like that. <laughs> And another, the other one, I mean, it's a, you know, not much of a line, but like the way she says it, this, this is something that is, they have changed to grow to love. Uh -huh. I didn't like the way Gina Davis said the line when she's on the phone with Daryl mm -hmm. and because it's like, oh my God, she's really going to give it to him. And she's like, Daryl, go fuck yourself. And she hangs up. Yeah. Never being young and being like, wait, that's how she says, go fuck yourself. Right. But as a grown up, I'm like, that is so true for her character. And it's so, She's never talked back to him well, in her whole life. it's so much more powerful that yeah. way. It's so much more real. Like, and she sounds exa just exhausted, a bit and scared. She's, she's scared to she's even so say done. it. Yeah. She's like, you know what? I don't need your shit. But she doesn't like, say, go fuck yourself. Like, no. Like, I, like, she, but she's exhausted. She's when like, I'm done. Young, like, when I was young, I was, I was like, oh, what a wasted moment. She, she, she was like, go fuck yourself. But she isn't. She's like, go fuck yourself. Like, yeah. she's, she, she just can barely get the words out. Right. Because it is such a moment for her, for that character to actually say no to her husband. Yeah. 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 It's good. It's really good. Um, I really liked the part with Louise. So Louise is super strong. She's obviously like the leader throughout all this, mm -hmm. at least like three quarters of it yeah. anyway. And she's trying to figure out what to do. She's got a plan, kind of. She contacts Jimmy. Mm -hmm. I love seeing her vulnerability with Jimmy. Mm -hmm. She clearly loves this man. Yeah. And I think that this was a really nice moment for her, this growing moment. First, when she's on the phone with him. That's one of my favorite scenes. Right? When she's in the hallway and she's like, oh, the hallway or whatever. She's on the phone she's with in, him. She's sitting on the part of, she's in the hotel room. She's sitting on like this, this thing in the hotel room and she's in a bath towel, right? Yeah, and yeah, she yeah. says, I'm in deep, deep shit, Jimmy. Deep yeah. shit, Arkansas. She's like, I can't tell you. I'm in, I, I'm in trouble. I can't tell you why. It's just that I did it um, and I can't undo it. And she's completely... She's, Fighting back tears. That's She's exactly right. crying. She doesn't want him to know. She's on the phone. And I, that scene, she is so, Susan Sarandon is, it's like some of the, I think the best acting I've I seen of her. I 100% yeah. agree. Yeah. And then when she hangs up with him, yeah. I think that's when she slides. Like, I remember her sitting on the floor. Like, I think maybe she slid down and was sitting on the floor after she hung up with her, him and then just like let it go. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just like, you could, that whole, it was so real. It was so, mm -hmm. so good. Yeah. So, so good. And then even just our scenes with Jimmy, it was just a nice, it was a, a nice interaction, you know? I mean, he's still the same Jimmy, kind of mm -hmm. leading her lines, but she's, our, she's grown so much in those past few hours mm -hmm. that she's like, no, I mean, yeah, I love you, but this is not going to work and this mm -hmm. is not going to happen. And she's just, it, it was, it was a nice it was, it was nice that it wasn't like this, like, crazy breakup. It was just this mature kind of conversation. Probably the most mature conversation they've ever mm -hmm. had in their whole life. Well, even to going back to the hotel, well, the scene, while the Brad Pitt, while the J.D. and Thelma scene is going on, they're having this much different sort of situation yes. there. And he flips the table and she's like... I'm, you know, I'm out of here if you're, pulling, of, yeah, if you're yeah. pulling that shit, which means he's pulled that shit before. Yes. So it's like, you gotta, you get, you, to your point, you learn so much about the, what their relationship's been like and yeah. that she's, to your words, like matured a lot in these last few years. And she knows, she also knows that this is pretty ill-fated. She's yes. going to Mexico. She feels bad because I, you know, you can kind of get this as if she feels bad because like he's finally growing up. 
Just, but the timing couldn't be worse. And, she, you know. Like, right. Yeah. But she knows, too. Like, she knows. Like, she couldn't. Even if in the right circumstances, if he asked her to marry him, like, she knows he's doing this for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. But then he does, well, at the moment, he he comes through. He gives her the ring. He mm-hmm. kisses her goodbye. Mm-hmm. Says all the right things. Doesn't mean it because he ends up telling the cops anyway with it, everything. But at the time, he yeah. says all the right words. Well, like, and she says, she's like, what would you do? Take a, p- Jimmy, take a pill to, that may just, makes us say all the right things? Yeah. Um, yeah, they're great. Yeah, they're awesome. They love their scenes together. Yeah. I will uh. say what worked. Oh, more dialogue. When it's after the uh, Gina Davis, or after Thelma robs the, the I store. I know what you're going to say. I wrote that one down too. Brian. Wait, how do you know what I'm going to so say? It's so weird because you're going to say it's not like I killed someone or anything. Oh, well, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. But okay. no, it's when um, they're watching the video, the, the police watch the video, and one says, oh, no, dialogue is. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then <laughs> the other guy from um, Single White Female, what's his name? Okay, he's in every, every Oh, movie. He's, God. He's yeah. so good. He's in One Day at a Time now. But um, he goes, Good God. And then Harvey Keitel goes, My Lord. Yeah. <laughs> that was so great. funny. It was so good. So good. And I loved how they showed that. Like, I loved how she, they pull up, you go in, you don't know what's going on. I mean, <laughs> I didn't have an idea well, that she was doing no, that. No, a thousand percent. Right? I didn't yeah, know the she first was time I saw that. this, no. She yeah. goes in, and then all of a sudden she comes flying out. Start the car. Now, I think she should have had her start the car anyway. Like, I think the planning on that was bad. But, you know, it's her first robbery. So, you know, maybe. Well, also, she, she could have just left the car running. She was driving, right? Because Louise oh, is in right, the right, She right, could have right. just left the car running. And that's because right. then while she's in there, Louise sees the two old women looking out staring out the window yeah, yeah. and then she goes to put makeup on and she's just like fuck it like yeah. why am i putting we've been putting why makeup am i on. doing this yeah, yeah. why am i putting uh, lipstick on sorry um and then she comes running out and then you she's see because like, you're a little disappointed Louise! you're like i want to see what happened in there and then you see ah, it and it's so what like, did you say so like, i just walked in there and i said and the cuts it was just such a great uh like you know um editing thing you know yes. watching the actual video and it's it's so good first of all there are funny things. I mean, you could, if you wanted to nitpick, you'd be like, really, Velma? You have gl- sunglasses on? Mm-hmm. It's like, put a hat on. Put a, your head in right. a scarf. Like, like alter your appearance most. Sell that car for a different looking car. Right. Like, I mean, there's so many different different things they probably could have done. Um, but you just kind of go along with it. They're running for their lives. They're not going to stop yeah. and get car purchased. And remember, it's and a very short span of time. time. That's right. Yeah. They don't have time to find a dealership. They're just, they're just going. Yeah. They're just going. Um, um, some, oh, yeah, so I was going to say, something that re- other things that resonated more now than then, um, the day drunkenness. Love that. I know. I remembered it from before. Because when I was young, um, I well, couldn't, you know, drink then. But it, you, like, there were a lot of scenes where they're staring, like, it, it's just their faces, mm-hmm. like, looking out the, the, the um, you know, windshield yes. or they're looking out the side of the car or they're just standing and looking at like the sunset or the mountains or they're staring into nothingness. There's a lot of scenes yes. like that. And when I was young, I definitely didn't really track that like, oh, they're a little, she's a little buzzed right now. Mm-hmm. They're definitely getting sunburnt from yes. all this time in the, in the convertible. Um, they're exhausted. They're drunk. They're exhausted. They're, they're dehydrated. They're wiped out. They're not sleeping. Like, and you really... To the film, I think what the film does really well, and it, I missed it when I was young, but, yeah. like, you really see that wear and tear, and just, like, even when Louise is driving, and it takes her a while to realize that first cop is so close to her, and his sirens are on, and it takes yes. her a long time to snap out of it, or the snap into it. Yes. Um... But I thought that was great. Yeah, I liked it, too, and it really, I think they did a nice job with... Con, not contrasting, but complementing their appearance and their run down, you know, from super pretty prepped, mm-hmm. the, you know, curls and all that to where they ended up. I like how they, it was, it was, it was in, in complement to their personal growth, like their personality growth, mm-hmm. where, especially the Gina Davis mm-hmm. character, Thelma, where 
she is the super trusting, naive person, and then she turns into this, <laughs> like, confident, <laughs> super confident yeah. bank robber mm -hmm. who is just, like, doesn't give a shit. And she's like, you know, fuck it. This is who I am now. And I really like that speech that she gives to Thelma where mm -hmm. she's just like... Louise. I'm sorry, so she gives to yeah. Louise. Where she's just, you know, I can't go back. Mm -hmm. Please don't ditch me, kind of thing, yeah. right? Don't don't make a deal. There's there to the trivia of that. There's there was talk of um, what, as they're driving off the cliff at the end that Louise pushes Thelma out of the car. Yeah. Oh, did you know this? Um, oh. I did not know oh, okay. this. I did not know this, but I will tell you when we talk about the ending. Um, like I said, I did not love the ending, mm -hmm. and that's actually a scenario that I have in my head. Oh my god. Where I felt I feel like it would have been a better I think it would have been a better ending. Interesting. To, in my yes. And we I mean, we might as well be talking about that. Yeah. Because I'm thinking about it in in a lot of different ways where I just didn't feel like it did them justice to kill themselves at the end. I really didn't. And I understood where Louise was coming from because Yes, she would probably end up getting arrested and everything else. But uh, Thelma, I mean, she she held up. She, yeah, armed robbery, but they would have yeah. let that slide. She never had any, I mean, circumstances mm -hmm. would have probably put her on prob probation or some sort, mm -hmm. right? But think about how much better her life would be after, as opposed to... And how much growth, like they could have shown something a little bit more in terms of where she ended up. She could have, and I know it's it's a stretch or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I I would have been more satisfied knowing that Louise made that sacrifice for her and didn't take her along with her um, and pushed her out of the car or something, did something where she was out of the car and... Even if it was tricking her or something, I don't know mm -hmm. something where that sh where Louise w killed herself, but but saved Thelma, mm -hmm. and then Thelma could live her best life. So I don't know. I, I was yeah, it's tricky. I mean, I think like the we know where like we know what happened to you in Texas, and um, we don't know that whole story or what right. happened and if she even reported it or she did she kill her rapist or right. like you know whatever um so yeah i think the the rules would have been very different for louise she is the one that shot him definitely at the same time velma did not go to the police she did she kn she knew about this crime she didn't report it she um you know and there were, were there, was there something else that they were being charged with um, um, well, the co the police officer. Oh, right. <laughs> kidnapping. Yeah. Kidnapping. Kidnap but I feel like all of those things would have been expunged in some way because of the circumstances. Because of, like, the Harvey Keitel character would have had their, her back. Yeah. And he would have, he would have figured that out. Like, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Obviously, yeah, I remember being very satisfied by the ending then, and, and and now too. I mean, I again, I looked into like the trivia of this movie, sure. and when I read that. I was like, oh, that's super interesting. But wouldn't she have just spent some time in like she would have been in jail, like to discover that side of herself, that strength, and then just be like thrown in jail, and then yeah. and then you would have like the rape victim killing herself is the only way out. Like I like but I that was kind what of what happened. Message. The rape victim killed herself. No, I know. Oh, and they attempted rape victim killed yeah, herself. Yeah, yeah. No, but that, I guess what I'm saying is like, meaning, Lou, I wonder if it could have been deemed that like Louise was so troubled. Like if she had kicked them out of the car and then kept driving off the cliff, and this could, whole, this could whole, be a whole episode I know, of scenarios. I know, But like, I wonder if, what could there have been a potential message in that, that like, yeah, if you, you know, get assaulted and you can't handle your emotions, you should just kill yourself. And instead of, like, turning yourself in and going through or, you know, getting help or whatever. But then Velma, like, finds a strong part of herself and then gets arrested and thrown in jail. 
Like, it, it, like I wonder, I don't know. I feel like, the weirdly enough, I feel like this is more satisfying. Mm. Because it's in their control. Like, they're controlling their Right, destiny. and I think that was the whole argument yeah. of, you know, Ridley Scott, that when he was doing that, was like, well, they're in control of their ending. Mm -hmm. They're in control of their ending. Um, I will say, um, the, uh, Susan Sarandon said she would only do it if that ending didn't change. Meaning, Interesting. yeah, and she, they said, well, what if we throw them out before? Because <laughs> what they were afraid of is that, like, the test audiences would be like, what? Right. They just killed themselves? Um, and the t test audiences actually apparently liked it. It was a bit controversial, but they liked it. Uh, or at least not enough hated it, I guess is more accurate. Sure. But, um, but yeah, but Susan Stern said, I don't want it. I don't, she's like, I don't want us to end up at Club Med. Because that's a line right. in, the, in the movie. And right. she's like, I, if this last scene of us is in Club Med, I'm she's like, it, I just like, I don't want anything to do with it. Right. So if you think it might change, I don't want, want it. First choice. Do you know this? The first casting? No. Cast Michelle Pfeiffer and Jodie Foster. But all I can think of is, like, would Jodie Foster really play another, like, rape victim or attempted rape, uh, you know, rape after the was accused? This, this, this was after, after the, the accused, accused. Yeah. And what's super interesting is that Michelle Pfeiffer and Jodie Foster... Michelle Pfeiffer was first choice for Silence of the Lambs. Right, that's right. And um, Jodie Foster, so Susan Sarandon, Gina Davis, and Jodie Foster were all nom nominated for an Oscar that same year. Um, and Jodie Foster won for Silence of the Lambs, obviously. Yeah. Um, and Michelle Pfeiffer didn't, um, the, the, it was taking too long, the, the, all the meetings for them on the Louise. So Michelle Pfeiffer turned it down and took this movie called Love Field. Oh. Uh, which is an interracial during the 60s uh, relationship. And I I she ended up getting an Oscar nomination for Love Field the following year. Wow. So, yeah. They all made good, they, good you know what? They all made good choices. Yeah. They were all, they had good, <laughs> they had some good agents. Um, um, did, what else? So, speaking of the officer being yeah. pulled over, did he not look like a Chippendales, like, dancer? Well, did you hear what Louise said? She's like, oh my God, it's a Nazi. Because oh that's what it is. It's like, yeah, he's like the blonde, tan, yeah. Yeah, and his, his uniform was super tight. tight. Yeah. I'm like, he looks like a Chippendales <laughs> dancer right now. I do love him. I loved his his, his performance. Um, I think, is it Jason? I forget his oh, name. Oh, God, beige. Is it be Oh, something. But um, he, what I loved is that you can see his face, like, he is so scared as there, she's like shooting the holes in the yes. trunk, and oh, like his whole face so is good. like, "Please, I have a wife and kids." You know, yeah. Like, and you'd be good to him. Yeah, my my husband was good to me. Look where I can't. What what happened to me? <laughs> I love it. Look she, they had some out. really really good lines. They yeah. really did have some good lines in here. Really good. It did win the Oscar for screenplay. It was nominated for six Oscars. It won the Oscar for um, best screenplay by Kelly. Kelly Corey, who would later go on to create the TV show Nashville. Oh, that interesting. was on for like a million years. Yeah. Oh, wow. That is interesting. Um, one thing I was kind of bothered me was the, the group of cops sitting at the house and they, Louise called mm -hmm. and talked to him. And that's when she finds out that they know that she's going to Mexico. Yeah. Right, because he's like, you're never gonna I don't make think it to you're Mexico. Gonna make it to Mexico. Yeah, she's like, shit. And what I didn't understand was, if they know that they're going to Mexico, why are they all still sitting in the house? What's the point of them still sitting in the house? Well, they, there was an APB done. The, yes, it was done, and I think that's why they were able to get twenty five police cruisers after them so so seemingly out of nowhere because i think as they got closer to that destination that's why all the cops were suddenly at the ready mm -hmm. they they everyone was looking it seemed seemingly were, were was looking for them yeah. i think that was right those people in that room would not be necessarily in cars driving after them themselves in but fact they were they, they, at the end he was, wasn't, um, Kevin Keitel in the helicopter, and then the other the guy other was in a was car, but FBI I don't think, but remember, the first wave of police cars were not them. Mm -hmm. They were like, they were like, remember, flipping over, going over yes. turns, smashing under the bridge. But like, and, in a matter of minutes, they were behind, I mean, they were, it wasn't that much later. He kept saying, take me there, take me there, and he's like, no, you're no use to me, um, 
now. He's like, well, you know how this works. The volume gets turned way up and blah, 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 yeah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I think they took the helicopter. I think that was them on the helicopter. Well, it was them on the helicopter. Well, Harvey Keitel. I think so. I really do. Okay. You're talking about Stephen, that's his name, Jablowski or... Kob- yeah, 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 yeah. I think they were in the helicopter. I didn't notice him in there with them. All I right. thought it was just... I thought Harvey Keitel just found him on the helicopter because he wasn't invited. He wasn't invited, the, yeah. Maybe, that, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But you're I, probably right. You're it right. felt real to me. It felt like, I mean, there's detectives and there... Or, or detectives and it there's... It just seemed like, to me, it seemed like... Thelma and Louise were, like, on the road constantly, right? Driving, 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 driving. And then every time you you cut to the police officers, they were still in that same room. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know. I mean, you're probably right. They had different yeah. jobs or whatever, but um, it but, just seems well, funny. They, when they cut J.D. They brought him to the police station, police I think, station. right? Police station. Yeah, maybe there's, there's, maybe there's some weird... Yeah, they wouldn't have gotten driven all the way back. Yeah, that's kind of weird. I don't know. They were driving for a lot. You know, they were driving for a while, so it seemed weird. I mean, I get, you know, the helicopter obviously caught up. Yeah. Do you want to take a little break? (gasps) Yes, please. All right. Let's take a little break. We'll be right back with more Thelma and Louise. Hey there. It's Brian and Christina. We just wanted to take this break to thank you for listening to Old Roommates, the only podcast that revisits pop culture through a middle-aged lens. Please subscribe to Old Roommates on iTunes, Spotify, and wherever you listen to podcasts. And give us a rating or review while you're there. And if you have any questions, comments, or observations, shoot us an email at oldroommatespod at gmail.com. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Old Roommates. Thanks for listening, and now, back to the show. And we're back talking about Velma and Louise, the 1991 Oscar winner. Christina. I do do think it's kind of cute how you say Velma. What am I supposed to say? You you say Velma. It's a very hard TH sound. Velma? How do I say it? That's that's how I say it. Velma. You say Velma. Oh I didn't want to say it too God. early because I didn't want you to stop saying it. That's so mean. No, I thought it was, it's cute. It's oh. cute. So. Um, so, what else? What else? What else? Oh, there was a great line. <laughs> to get back to some of the lines. The line, I'm telling you, that's one of the things that I forgot about, how great some of the lines are. Mm-hmm. When Louise basically says, you know, she hangs up the phone and she tells um, Thelma, yeah, you know, they know we're going to Mexico and da, 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 you know, whatever. They're charging you with armed robbery and like all this stuff, yeah. right? This is kind of like an update. And then Louise says, gosh, do you say anything positive at all? <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh. Um, that was also Thelma. See, you just want me to say Thelma. Like, see, you just said it. But um, yeah, that was Thelma. That wasn't Louise that said that. Yeah, no, it was Thelma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I said Thelma, didn't I? I think he said Louise. Well, we'll see. I said Louise hung up we'll the phone. We'll see, won't we? We will. Absolutely, yeah. we will see. Uh, but yeah, that was good. I think um, there's a lot of just like, yeah, like think smart, thoughtful dialogue. Um, Movie-ish, but also pretty real. Like I could see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, I could yeah. see it. We didn't talk about the 18-wheeler guy. Oh, my God. Well, truck. the only note I have about that yeah. is I cannot believe Thelma Put on a disgusting hat. Ugh! So gross. gross! Can you imagine what that thing smells like? Oh, I can't. Ugh. I can't. I mean, they probably don't smell that great either right now, mm. but I agree. I thought, I saw that right away. I'm like, oh, what is she going to do with that hat? Ew! And like the next thing she had on her head, I'm like, ugh, so gross. Um, I thought it was a bit over the top, that whole thing with the oil rig blowing up. Oh, to me, I was like, they, they're out of fucks to give. Like, they don't care. Yeah. Like, they're going to, they you know, they've, they've had, they want to teach, they truly did it to teach him a lesson. Yeah. That's the only reason. They were on the run. But Even I don't think they meant the... to do the, the, the truck. I think they meant to do all the tires. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it like, oops. Well, it kept blow blowing, truck. and it kept blowing up. Yeah. When they, even they were driving away, she's like, how'd you learn to shoot like that? And she's like... Off the off the TV. She's like, "How'd you learn to shoot like that?" And she's weird. And she's Texas. And then there's that final explosion, and they go, "Ooh, 
Um, <laughs> but I thought that was just like, because they're on the run. They're on the run. They don't have time for this. Right. They're truly like, you know what? Let's just fucking teach He's, this yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, they're just like, done. Because she's like, I wonder if he called us beaver. He called us beavers. I hate that. I hate being called, <laughs> just, I hate being called I love, a beaver. I, and I love how he thinks he's going to get lucky. Oh, my God. And he's like, he's hey. So and he's so gross. He's like missing a bunch of teeth. And he's just so <laughs> disgusting. And he's just like, he can't, can't even like open his eyes. I know. Right? Like I he's know. just gross. And he's like, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> his, his his lines are like line readings were pretty. Oh my funny. gosh! But I love the the look on his face. How it changes because he's all happy that they pulled over, and then he's like, she's like, what you know? What is it with the tongue wagon? That is disgusting. <laughs> and do you talk to your mother like this? Or your sisters? <laughs> and he's like, also he's like, huh? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> So yeah, that was it was funny, but I did think like blowing up the truck was a bit. Oh, over. I I went I went with it, but it was like an accident. So whatever, yeah. it is what it is. Um, anything? Yeah, else? I do have a couple things. Um, let's see. Yeah, I, so I want to repeat because I, I don't know if I was clear last time. I so the ending I liked, but I don't like how quickly went to the to the happy times. Right. I, I, I just want to be clear. You made I, that pretty clear at the beginning. Okay, good. Because it felt yeah. very forced. And then the, um, when they are driving over the, the cliff, right before, um, there's like, the music gets like a little different and it's suddenly in like this voice that go, ah, ah, ah. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? I don't remember. I don't think I, it sounds I like, like angels singing and it's like super weird. And that it's like, weird. I just wish they would cut that, that, yeah, just get that, that right out. There, there's an alternate ending we can find on YouTube, oh. and um, it is, uh, it's not di very different, other than the fact that the song playing is that, you know that song, Better Not Look Down? Better Not Look Down. Mm -hmm. And they play it in another, when they're cruising all around the highway, yep. they play almost the entire song, and the, they drive off the cliff, and they show the car falling in slow motion, like all the way down. It's turning over. You see the hats ah. fly out of the car, but the song's playing the entire time. And then Harvey Keitel runs over to the edge of the cliff and looks down and the car is just like plummeting to the bottom, but in slow motion and to the, to almost to the length of the entire better not look down song. And, um, I don't, uh, I don't know. I mean, sure. It's like, I don't know. I'm I, not sure I would have, I, I don't know. I, I might have liked that ending better. Yeah. And it's still the same. They're, they're going to die. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. And one more thing. Then the screen does turn white and it, um, and it goes, that, remember that main road, how, remember it opens up with like the mountains in the distance. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, the final, final part is that main road again and you see them driving down. Um, with like dirt flying all around them, um, which is a little like too, a little too symbolic. No, I wouldn't want that. Yeah. The rest of it wouldn't be so bad the way you describe yeah. it. Um, I did like the car chase was pretty, I thought the car chase was pretty wild. Oh, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was a great car chase uh, mm -hmm. as car chases go with the dust flying yep. and just surprises and the lost them kind of because there is that part where you're like oh maybe they're going to get away with this yeah, you do all. get that yeah. spot right yeah. you get that and then i really really loved how you see them you think they lost you know they lost the police cars or whatever and you see them driving oh wait did they already stop at the cliff they might have already stopped and you because you see the cliff and then you see the helicopter coming yeah from the distance yeah and of course, when you're first watching the movie, you don't understand that that's, right. you know, they're going to get them. But knowing that that's them, mm -hmm. that gave me chills. Yeah. Well, yeah, because they are driving around the edges and then that helicopter, the camera like is like just has a very wide, is very wide and the, the helicopter comes around, but under where they're driving. Yes. And, um... And I remember watching that the first time being like, oh my God, they're going to get like shot from the helicopter. Like someone like they're going to uh. have like a marksman like shoot them from the helicopter. And I honestly expected a Bonnie and Clyde. I expected them to oh, get like shot shoot, shoot 50 times and like it was going to be really bloody and they were just going to be slumped over the, you know, yeah. steering wheel. But, um, no, so I was really, I was, maybe that's why I liked the end. Yeah, I so guess much. it's better than being shot to death, I guess. 
Um, the only other thing I have for my notes mm -hmm. is um, just, again, that I really loved Harvey Keitel. Mm -hmm. And I just, like, he was, I, I remember there was, like, this huge controversy when this movie came out where it was like, all it is is bat, you know. Batman bat bashing. Batman bat bashing and all this. And, I, I mean, I get it. I mean, especially after you watch it a couple times, you're like, yeah, I mean, every man in there does them wrong, except for Harry Cartel. Yeah, yeah. And I really appreciated him this time around. I really loved him. Mm -hmm. He deserved more of a backstory, I thought. But, I mean, of course, he couldn't really. Mm -hmm. You can't really. Mm -hmm. It's not about him. Yeah. But, I, I don't know, he was just such a great guy. I wish he was... I don't know. I don't know if it was in it more or something. I just, for such a small role, he did an amazing job mm -hmm. of being tough, realistic, kind. You really believe he can help them. Yeah, yeah. You really feel that. You're like, come on, Louise, listen to him. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway. And you kind of needed it because there was this idea of like, you know, the fact that Louise sort of touched base with him a couple times. Yes. You're like, oh, maybe he actually can convince her. And this will end in a different way, and or who knows? But um, but yeah, he's great. He's really yeah. really good in this. Um, interesting fact: Chris, you know, Jane Davis and Christopher McDonald were engaged to be married once. Wow! Before, yeah. or after Thelma. Before, Louise. so she left. Chris, she called off her engagement to Christopher McDonald um, to date Jeff Goldblum. Interesting. Um, and so it was made for sixteen and a half million dollars, which that surprised me that it was a bigger budget than yeah, that. Yeah, I would think so. And it and it made forty five million. And again, um, I feel like I remember this movie being like a huge hit. I think forty five million sounds. I thought it was low. a pretty huge hit too, yeah. because of everybody talking about it. Yeah, I mean, everyone talked about it. The um, and then my only other note is a little bit of trivia, but I love that song, um, "The Ballad of Lucy Jordan" by Marianne Faithful. Yes. So you know, I'm talking. I scene. do. Okay. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. You know that who, was great. You know who wrote that song? No. Shel Silverstein. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. I love that soundtrack. Interesting. Um, I remember. I never got. I liked soundtracks a lot back then, and um, for some reason, I never bought this one. And as I was watching it this summer, I'm like, wow, this would be a good soundtrack. Mm -hmm. I was actually thinking about that. Yeah. Oh, we didn't talk about The Waitress. I loved her. Oh, The Waitress she was great. Good. I love that weird little flirty moment she has with Harvey Keitel's character. Yes. She's like, oh, you're was... me out here all night just asking me the same question over and yeah. over. That was a nice... <laughs> I, I really liked that scene a lot. Yeah. Um... She because it was she's like they didn't kill him anybody yeah. could have killed him yeah and she's like, I hope it was his wife she's like, and you think about wife. I mean think about that though I mean there was I mean if they had think about this okay this all happened and they went to to the mountain cottage mm -hmm. and pretended nothing happened <laughs> don't you think they could have gotten away with it yeah uh, well though the bullet came from her gun. They don't even know about the gun, though. Like, like I feel like... I don't think it would have gotten to that point. I think they, if they went up and interviewed these girls, and they mm -hmm. said, oh, no, we just... We left. Yeah, we, yeah, we were dancing and whatever, yeah, and, I, and we left. That might have stopped them, because Harlan, mm -hmm. he had a jealous wife. Yeah. He was a mean bastard. And she, and she even said it could have been anybody. Yeah. And she's like surprised he hasn't been, you know, shot. There could have been a lot of different other yeah suspects, suspects yeah. in the area. I don't think. I think if they played it off enough, like, oh no, we just came up here and this is where we are, and you know, hid the gun or whatever. I don't know if if, if an investigation would have been any deeper than that. Maybe they didn't want to take that chance. They've been well, sitting. Clearly, they didn't want to take that. <laughs> well, chance. they would have been sitting ducks if they went to that. They never even had that conversation. That is true. She's just they like, never no, we're just that. leaving. We're just yeah. leaving. Yeah. She was really quick to leave, and I get it because she, whatever happened in Texas happened in Texas. Right. So she's obviously it's like a you know PTSD. Well, it's like a fight. Yeah, fight or flight, and yeah. they're like, let's get the hell out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh jeez. Ah. <sighs> uh, questions. Questions. Oh, wait, did, so I'm assuming you liked it more? I liked it more, yeah. yeah me too. I'd like to watch Such it again. Such a good movie. And beautifully shot. It so, is beautiful. There's so many, again, so many scenes of just like, 
them staring out into nothing or even just like they when they're washing their armpits yep. in that basin and it's like just beautifully shot so so many great 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 absolutely. scenes absolutely and great soundtrack everything yep. do you want me to ask you first or do um you... it doesn't matter i have an fmk for you oh okay let's do that um all right here's your fmk okay daryl jimmy mm. and the truck driver of the oil rig all right. Well, first things first. Thank God. For, I'm glad you didn't give me Harlan. No, uh, I, don't know. I wouldn't have done Harlan. Uh, um, we'll kill. We have to kill truck driver. Yep. Yep. Um, and I will mm. have sex with Daryl. You're gonna marry Jimmy? I will. Well, he's, yeah, he's, he's kind of your type. Yeah. He's kind of yeah. your type. Yeah. I mean, not personality-wise, but, like, no, I like yeah, I mean, I, looks-wise, yeah. I think he's kind of more your type. Yeah, I like him. He seems, like, very, like, protective, but chill in a way. Oh, he's pretty immature. He can't commit. Well, who would you give me, Christina? Well, what would you say? I would say the same. <laughs> <laughs> Here's mine. It's also about Daryl. Okay. Dumb Daryl is so dumb. It's a, How, it's a real match oh, game. Oh, good, yeah. good. How dumb is he? Thank you for asking. He's so dumb, he tried to scramble an egg while it was still in the blank. I don't have any blank pages to write on anymore, okay. so I don't think. I might, maybe, well. Oh, wait, oh, look at that. It's like magically appeared. All right. I have it. All right, let me know when you're ready. I will repeat it. Peace. Okay. Dumb Daryl is so dumb. How dumb is he? He tried to scramble an egg while it was still in the blank. The chicken! <laughs> I'm I said the carton. Oh my uh, god! I thought you were going to say egg. I was like, oh, she's going to say egg. No, uh, still on the chicken. I still on the shell. Still on the shell. Sorry. That's how dumb he is. Oh, good times, uh, guys. Such a watch. Good, such a good rewatch. I'm watch so glad we chose that, to do this. Yes. Oh, and thank you to who? Um, um Lauren. Lauren actually suggested this rewatch. My friend Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. So thank you so much. Really quick, I bought it. So on iTunes, you can rent it for three ninety nine in HD, oh. or buy it for four ninety nine. Shut up. So I bought it for four ninety nine in HD. So if anybody wants to watch it, come over to iTunes. That's us. right. Um, iTunes four ninety nine. Own it forever. Wow. Good job. And that is it for us and for this episode of Old Roommates. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to Old Roommates on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and wherever you listen to podcasts. And give us a rating or a review while you're there, please. If you have an idea for the show or a suggestion or comment, you can email us at oldroommatespod at gmail.com. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Old Roommates. This is Christina. And this is Brian. Thanks again for listening. Until next time.